Okay, so one of the things that got released last week at Google I.O. was actually something that got announced back in December when they released Gemini 2.0. And this is the whole idea of native audio out. While a version of this was done for the Gemini 2.0 models, and I tested it back then, I think for various reasons, Google just felt that it wasn't right for prime time, perhaps in what you could do with it for controlling the speech generation, etc. So last week they did release this. It's now in preview. Anyone can use it. In this video, I'm going to go through a notebook of code and show you actually how you can do it. But let's look at sort of just quickly what you can actually do. So you can do single speaker text to speech out with this. You can also do multi-speaker text to speech out. So one of the cool things with this is you can actually recreate the kind of podcasts that were done by Notebook LM, where you've got two people speaking to each other, even things like cutting each other off or being able to laugh at a joke. All of those things can actually be done with this. So being a little bit different than a normal TTS system here, not only can you tell it what you want it to say, you can actually give sort of descriptions of how you want it to be said. So if you want the model to be laughing, if you want the model to whisper or to speak in a certain way, we're able to do that by controlling the speech style with the prompts. And you can see that this is one of the key things about this. Now, like I said before, this is still in preview. It's not actually the Gemini 2 models anymore. This is a Gemini 2.5 TTS model, if we come across to the AI studio, we can actually come down to native speech generation and we're able to generate either the single speaker audio here or the multi speaker audio here. So if you want to do it via the UI, you can certainly come in and do this. If you see down here, we can actually also even listen to the different voices. Ready to build something awesome today? Got a project in mind? What do you want to explore? Ready to make something amazing? So while all of this can be done in the UI, I actually want to jump into the code and look at how we can actually do this via code for generating single speaker things. So if you wanted to do like an audio book reading or something like that, and also to be able to generate multi-speaker interactions. So if you wanted to do like the notebook LM kind of stuff, let's just jump straight into the code and have a play with what you can do with it there. Okay, so jumping into the code, the first thing you want to do is make sure you've got a recent version of the Gemini API. So this Google Gen AI in there so that it will actually work. In this case, I'm using it in Google Colab over the weekend. I was actually doing stuff with scripts and stuff like that. I'll talk a little bit more about some of the things I noticed if you're doing scripts in here. You will need a key. So if you're doing Colab, this is probably the easiest way just to put the key in your secrets. Initialize the SDK and we want to get a list of the models. So here I'm just looking for the actual models with the TTS. So there are two models currently available. Both of them are in preview, but we've got a 2.5 flash model and a 2.5 pro model. So experiment around. I actually find the voices on the flash one to work out really well. So honestly, I haven't been using the pro one that much, but you may find for sort of multi speaker or things where you're describing the emotions more that maybe the 2.5 Pro works better for you. All right, once we've got that going, so this would be a normal call just to generate some text, right, with Gemini. To do a call for the basic TTS, it's honestly not that much different. We've still got the same things we're bringing in. The key thing that we need to define is the prompt and the actual voice. Now, the prompts, you tend to basically say up front how you want the thing to be said and then actually what they're going to say. So in this case, I'm saying, say excitedly, that's right, Gemini now has text to speech, right? Okay. So the actual call is pretty simple. We pass in the model, we pass in the prompt, and then we've got to configure the response modality is going to be audio. And we want to configure both the speech config and the voice config. So the voice config is actually in the speech config. And that's basically just how we pass in the voice. So you can see this in here. Now, there are other things that we could put in there about what language it is and stuff like that. If you do want to do something that's perhaps not English, go and have a look at how you would set that up with the actual speech and voice config in there. Once we've got that done, we can basically just trigger our call, get our response back. 
And you'll see that the data for this is actually in the candidates that come back in here. Now, one of the things that I found, I'm not sure why, but on when I was doing this with scripts rather than in Colab, was that I needed to take this data and actually convert it to base64. I don't seem to need to do that in the Colab. It's working fine here. With my scripts, I was having issues and I tried that and that fixed it. The other thing is you'll see is once you get something back, you're going to be able to look at the actual metadata. So if you want to see how many tokens that it actually took and stuff like that, I'm not sure exactly how they're going to charge for these tokens versus normal tokens, whether the price is the same. I think while it's in preview, perhaps that hasn't been sorted out. And looking at it in AI Studio, I don't see any information about it there. Remember, AI Studio is really good if you want to actually audition the different voices. You can come in here and you can see there's a whole bunch of different voices in there that we can audition to work out, okay, what are the voices that we like the most for this? Now, once you basically got that data out, you want to save that. So that's what this function at the top is just for saving it to a web file for you. And you can see that the sample rate is 24K in there. Once we've got that, we can basically play this out. That's right. Gemini now has text to speech. So you notice there that she didn't say the say excitedly. She just started with that's right. Gemini now has text to speech. So you can sort of front load your description of how you want them to actually speak. And you can do it for each prompt that you're going to pass in there. And then it will be able to interpret that out. All right. Now, what I did next was basically just put it together as a function. And now we can reuse it for a bunch of different things. So just to show you some different examples of this, we're using different voice here. And I'm now just saying whisper softly and passing it in. And we can see that's going to sound like. That's right, Gemini. Now has text to speech. Okay. Then it's. They all come across, I think, a little bit as overacting. Let me know in the comments what you find to be the best prompts to get it to sound really good, but not sound like it's overacting at times. But it certainly was whispering softly. You could hear that in the way that it's going on there. Another one, laughing and giggling. Let's just take a listen to that. That's right. Gemini now has text to speech. <laughs> So you can see that I didn't really need to signal the laughing. And actually, I don't get a lot of control over that laughing. So sometimes when I generated it, I would get laughing at the front and the end. Sometimes I would just get it at the end. You can still use the temperature for this and you can play around with it and stuff like that. But be aware, it is a stochastic process, right? It's coming out of the Gemini model. Another one using the exact same voice is just, let's see, how, okay, how does that same voice now sort of sound with something perhaps stern and more angry? No more excuses. You can now use Gemini TTS. Okay, so you can see, again, I kind of feel it's like a little bit overacting, but it's definitely taking the cues that I've given it there, the fronts. Now, you can experiment with different ways of doing this. I find that the simplest way is just to put a colon there, but you could actually wrap these in quote marks and stuff like that as well, and then put your instructions in there as well. And I think you can do that sort of if you're doing sort of longer things in here. So if you wanted to make like an audio book reading kind of thing, you will still need to probably split it up into a certain number of paragraphs at a time, but you might be able to get away with it actually sort of taking some of this from the raw text and reading it in those sorts of ways. All right, so next up is the multi-speaker idea. And so this is really Notebook LM, right? One of the things that people loved about Notebook LM, and I guess it's just over a year now that it was announced, was this idea of sort of putting a podcast sort of thing. And I think it really was only late last year that it actually came out publicly. The idea was that if you've got some kind of multi-speaker content, you really want something that's going to actually sound quite good going from one voice to the other. Now we looked at this with some of the open TTS systems that I looked at recently, but obviously the challenge with that one was that it kept speeding up, right? So while the Dyer model was really good at handled the multi-speaker thing, it perhaps still had parts of it that were not fully worked out. So here, what we're going to do is we want to generate a transcript. So you can see here, I've just got a, a simple call to the 2.0 flash model basically saying generate a short transcript around 200 words. 
that reads like it was taken from a podcast by an expert of bringing back extinct animals. Now that's going to be the character Jenny and the podcast host is going to be David. They're talking about Jenny's team bringing back the woolly mammoth. The presenters will occasionally interrupt each other with their passion. Now you can see that sure enough, this generates out a nice formatted transcript where we can see like, okay, who's saying what we can see that we start out with David, then going to Jenny. And we could customize this a lot more. This is a really sort of simple example, but obviously you could take in any sort of content or even do a Google search and have it generate the podcast based on that Google search. So there's lots of ideas that you can do with this concept. But once we've got something like this out, we just pass it in. Now, you'll see this is the same as what we were doing before. The only thing now that's different in here is that we've got multi-speaker voice config. And so we're passing in the details for each speaker. So this is the speaker, Jenny. She's going to use this voice. This is the speaker, David. He's going to use this voice in here. Now, we could change the voices. We could change those kinds of things. Obviously, like I talked about before, if you wanted to change the language, you could come in here and change that as well. We get the data out exactly the same way. We save it the exact same way as before. Now, if we come down and listen to this, Welcome back to Rewilding the Planet, everyone. Today we have the incredible Dr. Jenny Chen, head of the Mammoth Revival Project. Jenny, welcome. Thanks, David. Thrilled to be here. So, Jenny, the big question on everyone's minds, woolly mammoths, we're actually talking about bringing them back. Where are we in the process? We're closer than people think. We've made significant progress in mapping the mammoth genome and identifying key differences from modern elephants. Key differences that allow for, you know, surviving the Ice Age. Exactly. And with advancements in gene editing, we're working towards inserting... Okay, so you can listen to this, and I'll give you the notebook, of course, as always. You can look, go in and listen to the full thing. And you can play around with it. So you'll notice in here, I don't have a lot of guidance of how to actually speak each of the lines and stuff like that. You certainly can do that. You can certainly put that into your transcript. Before, when I was playing around with it for sort of like an AI podcast, I had it doing it. Again, I kind of find that it's a little bit overacting, but I also find that a bit with the notebook LM. So I guess it's just kind of the way these things are currently working. But it is pretty amazing that you can just very quickly pick a few different presenters, stick them in here, have Gemini generate the conversation based on some sort of context that you've got and then convert it out, save it. And you've got your multi-speaker podcast going on here. So have a play with the notebook, see what you can do with it. I'm really curious to see what people can get in relation to any sort of effects on the voices and stuff like that. Certainly Google sort of locked this down for dialogue and for speech, but you can get some really interesting effects just by guiding the voice to speak in a particular way, etc. So let me know in the comments what you think. At the time of recording, I don't know anything about the pricing and stuff like this, so I'm not sure whether this is going to be quite cheap and effective for doing this kind of thing, or is the cost going to make it prohibitive? And we're still going to want those open models. Now, of course, those open models like Kokoro, etc., are still really useful if we want to do anything sort of real time where we're not actually pinging a cloud, but we're running at something locally, that's going to have a massive advantage speed-wise over this where we're calling out to the cloud, etc. Anyway, as always, if you found the video useful, please click like and subscribe, and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye for now.